So from the two young stars starting their international careers, we were discussing Atiba on the show yesterday um, and how at 37 he's just re-signed with, with Besiktas for one more year. Is he still, do you think, a key contributor for this qualifying uh, campaign? I speak to Atiba every couple of weeks um, on WhatsApp where we've built a, a bit of a friendship behind the scenes. Um, you know, I think you, you, you never know with Atiba. I think that's the, the best way of putting it. Um, you know, whenever you have that conversation with him, it's, it's always about how his body's feeling. And when you're in that sort of stage of your career, it can change quite rapidly. Um, I, I would say... Look, if we're relying on Atiba, he's more than happy to pass that torch on to Rosario, Mark Anthony Kerr, Sami Piet, Stefan Ostakio, you know, these young midfielders that are, are coming through the system. He's happy to do that. But I would never I would never rule him out because I think if his country genuinely called and needed him, uh, he, he would arrive for us. And I think it's that assessment. He's He's got to figure that out. Does he feel this country really needs a Tiba, or does he feel it's time for these young young men to take over the torch and be given their chance to, to step forward and, and become a midfield star? With so many games coming up, uh, potentially 20 games to get all the way to Qatar 2022, are you concerned that some of these young players might get pressure from their clubs not to travel to, for some of these games, even though I know FIFA demand that they have to? We know the reality is they, they can have pressure applied to them. Yeah, I think that, that pressure is always there. I mean, that's that's the realities of, of international football. That you know, the club pays the wages. The club is what actually keeps you know the money flying into the bank for these people. And a lot of players see their their club careers is is very short term. So you know, anything that puts um, their their goals financially in jeopardy is is a challenge. But I'd like to think in these last two years that the group have really started to see their responsibility, which is bigger than just playing football for this country. And, and I think there's a group of players that, regardless of what pressure's being put on, regardless of where we have to travel to, they're going to get on an aeroplane and, and, and be there for their country. And then if you think about it, James, like, if, if, if you're, for example, let, let's use Germany or Bayern Munich as an example, and all of their players in international break go away for international duty, you know, for us, this is World Cup qualification, and every game counts, like one slip up and no 2022 for our players. So I'm not sure if, if any football club would, would stop a player being part of a World Cup qualification match that could prevent a player being at the World Cup. It would need a, you know, a big club domestic situation that would allow that sort of pressure to come in. Uh, so I'm pretty confident that, one, I know the players want uh, to, to be back together. They keep telling us they're, they're desperate to get back together. And I think, two, I think the clubs will respect it. it's World Cup qualification. These aren't people friendlies. Yeah, one final question for you, John. Um, it's strange times, obviously, and you know, no one really foresaw this change in qualifying format. Um, the hex is dead for the time being, which I think most Canadian fans are very happy about. Long live the oct moving forward. Um, <laughs> are, are you happy with this format change? I mean, there's always still a chance of you qualifying through the old format. We knew that, but it was complicated. At least now you know, I guess, how to get there. Yeah, you're right. It's it, all we wanted was to be qualifying on the field, um, and, and this is the chance we're going to get. It's a it's a 20 game campaign to get to a World Cup. I think it'd be one of the greatest football stories in our history if we if we make it rivaling that '86 group. So, you know, what a story for the fans, and you know, it's going to be on one side. Your your, your fans here are going to be able to follow this team, you know, right from the start and. I, I, I'm just picturing, like, when we get there, what a story this would have been, you know, for, for kids, for parents, grandparents to just unite around. So, you know, just happy, I think, to, to be in this mix. And, you know, this first stage, four matches, gives our team a chance to come back together, to, again, suffer a little bit, to learn a little bit, to ready us for what's going to be uh, a, a tough playoff game and then into an octagon where 
I, I, I'm sure everyone's excited to see us playing against those teams like the Hondurans and Costa Ricans, you know, every window. It's, uh, as I said, the, the players are, are just chomping at the bits and as a coaching staff, we, uh, we are so ready to get back to this.